Hello viewers, I'm Simon Preston and welcome to Reggae Voice Commentary. This is a new video I like to call, Where Are They Now? We're in the month of November and we are this close towards November 16, 1997. Well, no, we certainly are not. We're close to the 22nd year anniversary of Jamaica's qualification for the 1998 World Cup in France. That nil all draw against Mexico, historic day in Jamaica's history the most crime-free day Jamaica ever had, according to the Statistical Institute of Jamaica. There are zero recorded murders in the country on that day, November 16, 1997. So what we're gonna do in this video is look at the 22 players that went to the World Cup and where they are today. That's essentially what we're gonna do in this video. So let's start with the man between the sticks, the number one, Warren Barrett. Warren Barrett picked up 108 caps for the Reggae Boys, a pivotal part of that World Cup qualifying squad, especially many people look back to that game against Honduras in the semi-final round of World Cup qualifiers where he kept a clean sheet in that nil all draw. That's one game in particular where people feel that he was definitely a key component to the Jamaican outfit. What is he doing right now? Where is he now? He is the goalkeeper coach of the Reggae Boys and have been has been for quite some time, especially throughout the spells of Coach Whitmore's first stint with the Reggae Boys, full stint, and also Winfred Schaefer as well in addition to that. So that is Warren Barrett. Who are number two for Jamaica at the World Cup? It was Steve Shorty Malcolm. Now, he picked up 68 caps for the Reggae Boys and scored three goals in the process, but he passed away early. It was January 2001. January 28, 2001 to be specific. I remember it was a Sunday. Jamaica drew nil all with Bulgaria at the National Stadium and he was driving home with Theodore Tapa Whitmore and in a car accident he passed away. But he was a member of Jamaica squad and pay, played a key component in our qualifiers as well. Also a veteran player of SEBA United. Who are the number three? It was Chris Dawes. Chris Dawes, he picked up 66 caps for the Reggae Boys, where he scored one goal in the process. He coached a number of teams locally, Sporting Central Academy, Portmore United. Now he is overseas in the United States. Who are number four? It was Linval Rudy Dick, Jamaica's second most capped player in the history of international football. 127 appearances. Former Portmore United coach led them to a title, no longer their head coach. What about Ian Pepe Goodison? Ian Pepe Goodison, Jamaica's most capped player, 128 caps, 10 goals in the process. And I can tell you, earlier this year in 2019, I had the privilege of commentating a game that he played in. He played for Olympic Gardens in the Major League Final against Seaview Gardens. And Olympic Gardens got promoted to the Casafa Super League. What a spell that he had in, in football. With Hull City, Tranmere Rovers, the national team, playing in a number of Gold Cup tournaments as well. And was a part of that World Cup campaign. And was a captain of Jamaica in that 2-1 win over Japan. Fitzroy Simpson. 43 caps for the Reggae Boys. And did you know that Fitzroy Simpson played for Manchester City? Yes, he did. He played for Manchester City. He also had some time as well with Portsmouth as well in England. What is he doing right now in his career? He is a fitness guru. Who wore the number seven? That was Peter Cargill. Peter Cargill tapped up 84 caps for the Reggae Boys passed away at the age of 41 on April 15, 2005, as he was on his way to a game as he was the head coach of Waterhouse at the time. They were playing Wadada and he got into an accident. Who wore the number eight? Marcus Gale. Marcus Gale, three goals in 18 appearances for the Reggae Boys, scored against the likes of El Salvador at the Gold Cup in 1998, scored against Paraguay in a friendly and Sweden in a friendly match as well. He was a striker, now he is the owner of the Three Tribes Design of Store and also a tutor at Kick It Out. He's also a football agent as well. The number nine, Andy the Bomber Williams. Over 100 caps to his name as well, 20 goals for Jamaica. There are so many that 
goals that you have to say, wow, that was brilliant for Mandy Williams. I remember the last minute goal against Nigeria at the National Stadium to win 3-2. You remember the left footer against Cuba 2001. You think of that goal close to the halfway line against El Salvador in World Cup qualifiers. You think about the corner kick goal against Canada in 2008 at the BMO Field in Toronto. There are so many goals. You think about the, the free kick goal you think about the cleverness in the caribbean cup in 2005 against barbados there's just so many goals that he has scored mls cup winner as well with real salt lake and now he is a chief scout with the real salt lake the number 10 was walter the pearl blacker boyd he scored 19 goals for jamaica 66 appearances played overseas with colorado foxes and with swansea city and held a distinction as well in the football league for the fastest player to get a red card and he got a red card within 10 seconds after coming on as a substitute the number 11 theodore tapper whitmore tapper now the gaffer the manager the head coach of the reggae boys 120 caps he was a player and 24 goals for the reggae boys we've witnessed a number of Intriguing moments as head coach of the Reggae Boys, defeating the United States for the first time in a friendly match. Defeating the United States for the first time ever. September 7, 2012, a day that nobody should ever forget in the history of Jamaican football. A day that should never, ever, 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 ever be erased. Outstanding moments. The head coach when we drew nil all with Me uh, Mexico at the mighty Azteca Stadium. So there's been some good moments. Still, more room for improvement. The number 12, Dean Sowell. Dean Sowell is a player that brought the fans to their feet throughout World Cup qualifiers, especially that nil all draw against the United States at the National Stadium in 1997. 44 caps, 5 goals for Jamaica, did not score at the, did not play at the World Cup. And now, what is he doing now? He is currently overseas. Aaron Lawrence, 72 caps for the Reggae Boys, and believe it, one goal, yes. He was the captain for the Reggae Boys in the early 2000s, and he scored a penalty in a 3-0 victory over India at Vicarage Road. That game, you had Jermaine Tuffy Anderson, Aaron Lawrence, and Pepe Goodison scoring in that game. So Aaron Lawrence, the only goalkeeper to score a goal for the Reggae Boys. What is he doing now? He's a goalkeeper coach of the Turks and Caicos Islands football team. The number 14, Donovan Tall P. Ricketts, the man from the West, 100 caps for the Reggae Boys. Now he is the assistant coach and goalkeeper coach of the Tulsa Roughnecks in the United Soccer League. Donovan had a wonderful playing career, especially in MLS, Los Angeles Galaxy, Montreal Impact for a short period of time, Portland Timbers. But LA Galaxy is where he had the bulk of his playing, and I believe. The, the best that we ever saw of Donovan Ricketts, specifically club-wise, came at LA Galaxy. Number 15, Ricardo Bibi Gardner. That assist for, for Robbie Earl at the World Cup. Played 11 Premier League seasons for Bolton Wanderers. Played between 1998 and 2012 for Bolton Wanderers, the team from North Manchester. 342 league appearances for the Trotters. 111 caps and nine goals for the Reggae Boys. That number 16, Robbie Earl. Yes, he has an MBE to his name. Eight caps and one goal for the Reggae Boys. What is he doing now? He is a football pundit. The number 17, Onandi Lowe, 65 caps, 22 goals for the Reggae Boys. Let me repeat that. 65 caps, 27 goals for the Reggae Boys. Played for Port Vale, Rushton and Diamonds, Kansas City. And Andy Lowe has played everywhere. Also the father to Damien Lowe. And one of the best goals that I've ever seen in international football for the Reggae Boys, it came from on Andy Lowe. Had the ball inside his own half, turned, beat three players, got into the opposition box. From an acute angle, a left-footed strike, bam, into the back of the net. An equalizer against Costa Rica. What is Anandilo doing now? He's currently in the States working on his coaching badges. 
Number 18, Dion Burton, 13 goals, 62 games for Jamaica, 4 goals in 4 games in World Cup qualifiers, the only footballer, male footballer, to win the Sportsman of the Year for Jamaica, that was 1997. Had a good playing days with Derby County, played in the Premier League with them, had a number of spells as well with Sheffield Wednesday, spent some time there as well, also played in the Far East as well, scored key goals for Jamaica. Frank Sinclair, 28 caps for the Reggae Boys, had some playing career at Chelsea. And in addition to that, he was most recently Stoke City's under-23 coach up to recently in 2017. Daryl Powell, 21 caps for the Reggae Boys, got Jamaica's red card against Argentina. And now he is a football agent, namely to Daniel Johnson. Number 21, Durant Brown, Durant Tatty Brown, 102 appearances for the Reggae Boys, 5 feet 7 inches tall, a pillar in defense for the Reggae Boys. What is he doing now? I understand that he's owning a taxi business in Jamaica. When I asked Coach Whitmore and, and Warren about what they were doing, what he was doing, they said enjoying retirement. So, there you have it. Number 22, Paul Hall. The man born and raised in Manchester, England. 48 caps, 14 goals for the Reggae Boys. Now, the Academy Director of Queen's Park Rangers. Met him quite recently as well, uh, over in London. Quite a nice chap, wants the best for Jamaica's football. He wants all stakeholders involved to come together to analyze what we can do moving forward. And this is, this is former players, analysts, journalists coming together to rectify Jamaica's football and to put, put things in place so that Jamaica can move forward. Well, those are the 22 players that play for Jamaica at the 22, well, the 22 players that were named in Jamaica squad at the 1998 FIFA World Cup in France. We can look at more players as well down the road. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Which player or individual or former player do you want to know where they are now? And we could analyze that in the next video. But that basically is where they are now, the 1998 World Cup players that went over to France. Thanks very much for watching Reggae Boys Commentary, and don't forget to subscribe.